Hello, my name is Glenn Ash, and I'm a violinist, fiddler, all styles. And I just want to run through just really basic bluegrass bowings. I started bluegrass when I was in college. I was a classical performance major, and uh, these these bowings were a pretty important um, avenue for me to start to understand bluegrass style. So let, let me start by saying uh, these, these bowings aren't unique to bluegrass. You can find them in Mozart concertos. Um, that one right there, I'll try to get a better picture of it for you. Can I get a larger a photo or is this, uh, this is the best I can do? So I can get the whole bow in the picture. I am trying to get the whole bow in the The only so, way to affect it is just to move further move from back. your computer. Yeah, you can't really change the angle, unfortunately. Okay, so if you're a classical musician and you play the Mozart concerto, There it is. I'll do that again. It's two slurred, two separate, two slurred, two separate. Okay. Um, that's called the natural shuffle, and when when that's played in classical music, uh, the the, the emphasis is put on the beginning of the slur, like this. Now, if Mozart were writing a bluegrass piece, the musician would have to put the emphasis, the accent, on the first separate note that follows the slur. So it would be, it would be like this. So um, a good a good place to practice that would be. Uh, let's take out the blackberry blossom, which I uh, put into the um, files here. A uh, blackberry blossom is sim a simple descending pattern of identical patterns like this. Starting on the E string, second finger on the E string. When the bluegrass band plays uh, that song, the bass is going to hit the beginning of the beat, and the mandolin and probably the banjo and the guitar will hit the on the after part of the beat. So it'll be da 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 Basically, the, the accents that you're adding to this piece is where the rest of the band is hitting their afterbeats, the guitar, the banjo, the, the mandolin. So when it speeds up, it kind of gives it that, that tap, tap, tap feel.
Now, um, a lot of times when people start their little tunes, they start it with some kind of a riff that goes like. If you want something easier, just do open G, open D. If you take a uh, think about that figure, it's the same as the Nashville shuffle because instead of a slur, so that slur you just play a long note, uh, a, long, a note that's twice as long as the rest. So it's the same pattern. It's just done with not all four notes. It's done like. used to establish the Cajun Cajun style. sort of goes across all fiddle styles, that natural shuffle. Now there's another bowing that's sort of connected with the natural shuffle, and maybe the easiest way to explain the Georgia bow is that it kind of springs out of the natural shuffle. And I have a sheet attached somewhere in there that shows going back and forth between these two bowings. Now the, the basic uh, bowing for Get better light here. The Georgia bow is that that um that first seven note right there after the two note slur. Which as you can see goes a different direction each time, right? So the down bow. Up up down. So this Boeing direction flips each beat. It's a direction. Um, now, if you if you take that accented note, that first separate note, and put it all by itself, and then slur the next three notes. Uh, let me go this way. Slur the next three notes, which will take you across the beat, to the next accented note, and make that another separate note, also the same direction, which each separate note will be the same direction. If we pick a down bow, it's going to look like this. I'll, I'll play one uh, unit of natural shuffle, the second unit, unit, and here we go. Down, three, down, three, down, three. See that Boeing, um, it kind of makes things easier when things are flying along because it eliminates one of the bow changes. And so what you're left with is you're left with putting that accent in there with that down bow and then everything else is slurred. So you can really fly with that one. But let me go nice and slow. Let me start by playing the first four notes with a regular national shuffle. And in the middle of the next four notes, I'm going to flip it over to the Georgia bow. 
after that single note down bow. And from there on out, it's going to be the third note of each group going to be a single note down bow, and everything else is slurred up. If we run that quickly, you can you can hear that groove happening with that afterbeat, with you with that single down bow, that single down bow note is going to follow is going to be exactly with that that backbeat thing. It's going to be pop, 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 pop. that your down bow is going to be right there, which really really gets the band going. Well, it gets the groove going. So here we go. And then I ended with a bunch of separate notes just to get out of it. Um, now, by the way, if, if, if the, learning these things with the tune is complicated, you can just work it out with scales like this. G scale, Nashville shuffle. doubling the root note each time, right? Now I'm going to do the same thing I did with Blackberry Blossom. I'm going to um, play one group of straight national shuffle, and in the middle of the second group, I'm going to start the Georgia ball on that scale. So here we go. Oops, I can't do it because of the repeated note. Sorry, bad example. Get, let's get rid of the repeated note. Sorry about that bad example. So we'll do it again with no repeated notes. group of that, like a natural shovel, then I'm going to flip into the Georgia ball in the, in the middle of the next group. So it'll be like this. And separate. So finish up. Now, when you actually use these bowings in a fiddle tune, you don't play the whole tune in natural shuffle. You don't play the whole tune in the Georgia bow. You actually use these bowings pretty sparingly because most fiddle tunes get their drive from that separate bow going on most of the time. So it's like, like uh, separate bow stuff. So you want to keep the separate bow thing going on, but then you want to be able to throw in a little bit of Nashville shuffle, it's like spices, a little bit of Georgia bow, just to kind of switch things up a little bit, give a little different em emphasis to the rhythm. But when you're practicing it, this is a good way to learn it up front. So just keep in mind that when you really get to using this stuff, you want to be able to just kind of throw it in there, little pieces of it. <clears throat> um, so how do, we get, how do we get out of that Georgia bow to go back into the Nashville shuffle? Let's figure that one out. Uh, maybe let's go real slow on the scale and let's see if we can figure out how to get out of the Georgia bow back into the Nashville shuffle. Okay? Because you don't want to do a Georgia bow forever. It looks, start, looks pretty, starts to look pretty corny if it's like all the time. So here we go again. We're going to do the first group Nashville shuffle and then we'll flip to the Georgia. <laughs> Right 
right here, instead of going one note down bow, we're going to do two separate bows right there. And we're back. That puts us right back into the natural shuffle. So the way you get back into the natural shuffle is on one of those separate notes that's accented, you go ahead and follow that with another separate bow. That'll put you right back into the Nashville shuffle. Okay, let's try that. From and at the same place, it'll be on that coming down on that uh, C natural low two on A. Okay, here we go. So that's why, just take scales and then run this stuff with your scales and just get comfortable with it. Once you get comfortable with it, it's like riding a bike. It is so easy. That's why, you know, fiddle players, they're lazy, okay? They sit on the front porch on the rocking chairs. They do what's easiest. This is not hard. This is easy, okay? Here we go again. The scale. <gasps> See if we can apply that to black braid blossom. So, a black braid blossom, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to start in on the uh, natural shuffle, uh, one unit of natural shuffle. That means the first four notes, natural shuffle. And in the middle of the next four note unit, we're going to put that single down bow and carry into the Georgia bow. At some point, I'm going to switch it back over to Nashville shuffle on somewhere in the second line, maybe. Okay? Here we go. second major to second line. That's why I, instead of playing a single note on one bow, I played two separate notes, two, another note after it. And then start at this here, of the natural shuffle. Let's try that again. Thank you. 
is the second part of the Blackberry Blossom is that Cajun style. <laughs> second part, I went ahead and put in the uh, Nashville Shuffle the way it's marked in the part for this part. That's straight up Nashville Shuffle right there, but and then what's going on at the begin beginning, I'm adding, actually adding a note, so I have two groups of Nashville, of the Cajun bowling right in the first measure. I go like... that you're using the open string, rocking the bow to the open string. A big deal with bowing and fiddle songs is that you want to use the open strings number one and you want to rock between the strings every chance you get. That's what gives it that kick. So don't try to keep stuff like classical players want to keep it on one string. No, that's boring. You want to go... Separate style. That's that's the that's the bread and butter right there. The separate notes. Ba -da 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 -da. <clears throat> okay. So now there's another another Boeing, and for whatever reason, I like to call this the Vassar Clemens Boeing because Vassar Clemens used to do this Boeing all the time, and that's where. Um, okay, so you, you take your two groups of four notes. Looks like each measure has two groups of four notes. Four plus four. So that's four plus four. That's eight notes. You take that group of eight notes and you cut it up into three plus three plus two. Okay? And that gives it kind of a that that gives it kind of a, a slipping and sliding feel, like you're going in between the beats and stuff and it it's a, it's, a, it's a nice contrast to that do daka do daka booty da but all of a sudden you got this three three thing going groups of threes and and and, and your uh, slur three note slurs going on and your your basically everything's duple right it's all two notes it's all four note groups and you're and you're throwing in uh, by by way of your slur you're throwing in three groups of three notes and that gives it a whole new rhythm feel uh, kind of a Okay, let's see what happens if we slur three plus three in that first measure. So we got the first measure, we go one, two, three, and then one, two, three, and then the last two are slurred. So slur three, slur three, and then two, and that'll take up the measure just like that. Let's try that again. Now those last two, if that sounds a little bit too doggy to you, let's just separate them. So that's, that's great too, that works. In fact, let's try running the whole song that way with those last two being separated. That's going to put you on this down bow and the start of each measure will be a down bow. Here we go. That 
work there. So let's go. Let's do Nashville on that last scoop that uh, I'm playing something different. I'm playing M O U S E. I hope that's okay at the end. So let's do that with a, a Nashville. And here we go again. Three plus three and then two separate. <gasps> See how it flows. There we go. Now, what I just did on that second part is I instead of keeping the, the natural shuffle going, I added that slur over the beat, which makes it essentially a Georgia bow like this. Uh, natural. Georgia coming up. Right here. And separate. on that uh, second part I went in separate all by itself on the open E slur separate slur separate separate so the rule is just put that one single down bow on that open E and everything else is slur right here that was also a down bow on the open A. Okay, let's try it again. Sorry. I switched up there. So I wanted to end like that. So I just, after that last separate note, I had another separate note, and I was right, right back into the straight out. Nashville. Let's try that again. Nashville. Here we go. There. Here I am. Separate. I'm straight up now. So I just cut out of the Georgia bow in the middle of the last line, went back to separate bows, and straight back into Nashville. Um, now with this 3 plus 3 plus 2 thing, you can also slur those two, uh, two notes, right? Like that. Or you can do the same, same thing with your scale. Do a G scale, nice and slow. Uh, G scale, G scale nice and slow going up, three note slur, separate, start again, separate to the natural, remember to get out of it, let's try that again.
on the two notes, like. And I'm turning around each time, different bow direction. Here we go. Now, eventually, when you get really comfortable with that one, you could kind of throw those threes anywhere you want. It doesn't have to be three plus three. It doesn't have to be three plus three plus two. Wherever you want, you throw in threes. Now, the one thing you got to watch out for, if you're a classical player, is you don't fall into the trap, now that I said anywhere you want. Don't put that three um, repeatedly on the downbeats. In other words, don't make this mistake. Don't go one, two, three, separate. One, two, three, separate. Square as a box. That'll make you Mr. Misfit from the classical world. Do not go. That's kind of like the, the Georgia bow messed up by being moved over, so you're on the beat with that separate. Uh, so that you're, you're, you're not playing, <clears throat> you're, you're accenting the beginning of your slur. And that becomes your beat. And that makes you Mr. Square, Mrs. Square, Miss Square. Don't do it. But otherwise, throw those threes wherever you want. Uh, just for a simple example, why don't we just, instead of doing three plus three plus two, let's try three plus two plus three. And let's do those two with separate bows. On the scale, it would look like this. <laughs> play with them and and get comfortable with them but then don't use them all the time because that's that one's so easy to overuse that you, you kind of end up like turning your your interpretation into kind of syrupy syrupy flavor it doesn't have much not a lot of drive going on there you just want that for contrast to kind of set up set off your rhythmic stuff more um, <clears throat> now there's also, the, uh, at the top of the sheet that I put in there, uh, um, there's also the twos. Now, groups of two, uh, groups of two are actually how I think uh, contest fiddlers tend to improvise. So when you start breaking out of your fiddle tune heads and you want to improvise something on those fiddle tunes, maybe a little slower tempo than bluegrass, like more like Texas swing style, you want to like start adding like two notes Two notes, two notes, two notes. It's a, it's a way to think when you're trying to, to create something new when you're improvising. You play two notes and you, you try to think of the next two notes. And then you add two notes on that. And so that's, that's just basically the, the simple two notes per bow thing, which is on a scale. Let's go with two notes a bow. <laughs> If we, if we move those two note slurs over by playing the first note separate single bow and then slur across the beat and from there on out, from there on out we are slurring across the beats. Here we go on the G scale, first note separate, after that everything slurs the twos. Ready? Go! <laughs> throw that swing feel in there for you. And be careful as a classical musician that you don't think you have to do any more than that to swing a song. A lot of classical people think that swing is something like this. No, no, that is not swing. That's more like ragtime. That's way, you don't have to change the rhythm at all. The notes stay equal. The bowing dictates the swing. 
So um, let's, let's try um, Blackberry Blossom 2's on the beat. Ready? Slowly. Go! Sorry about that. <clears throat> um, now, let's just try, I'm going to show you an example of me improvising. Using that technique, nice and slow, two note slurs, just adding two notes at a time and see where it takes me. that you can do in the in, in your attempt to start oiling your your improvisational machine just play like that it's not that hard to do um kind of try to follow the line or the chords that you're hearing in your in your ear but it's not a big deal the, the chord thing if you want to you can outline the chords like g chord g chord right g chord c chord G chord, C chord, upside down, G chord, D chord start on the A note, um, A chord, D chord, G chord, D chord start on the F sharp, C chord start on the E. G chord on a D, C chord, D chord, G chord starting on a D, D chord starting on an A. So that's another good thing to do, just start those three note chords, they're just three notes in the chords, right? And a G chord is just G, B, D, that's the only notes in there. And then in the D chord, it's similar to the G chord, except it has an A in it instead of a B. So you find that when you go from one chord to the next, you, you often have to only change one note to follow that chord. You can, even, you can even figure that out by looking at the first note of each group. First note of the first group is, first note of the second group is F sharp, and then an E, and then a D. So those first notes are following the chords. Those are chord members of those G chord, D chord, C chord, G chord, C chord, okay? Kind of like Paco Bell Cannon. <laughs> Paco Bell Cannon is a fun thing to learn your improv on. Try it. It's, it, it'll, your ear will tell you where to go. Okay. Now let's take that two note slur and move it over a note. Play the first note separate, and we'll get that swing feel going on with 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 two note slurs through through the blackberry blossom. First note separate. At that we're slurring nice and slow, and go. you'll have probably a speed pretty close to what's used for Texas swing style, uh, Texas contest style, fiddling style. It's, it's a little slower than bluegrass, and it, it feels swingy, and it's not swingy because the notes are played different lengths. The notes are played pretty much absolutely straight 
but the bowings are what make it sound like you're swinging that stuff. So let's try the same thing a little quicker. And go. Basically, the bow is, is making it feel like the notes are, are not equal length. It should be pretty much the same length in the left hand, but the bow is making it feel like they're, they're unequal. So uh, you, you throw all those bowings together, uh, you, and then you start mixing them all up. So for example, if, if you take Blackberry Blossom and you use some separate bows, some twos, some threes, some Nashville shuffles, some Georgia bows, you might get something like this. guarantee you I used every single bow I just taught you and that and it was it was easy as falling off a, a bicycle I don't recommend falling off bicycles but it's easy this is really easy once you get this stuff into your arm muscle memory it's the easiest way to play the violin so um, <clears throat> now I'm, I'm kind of running out of my hour here but what I'm thinking is maybe I could just touch a little bit on the, the double shuffle, you know, this thing. Whoops. I should do something easier. That's a 1-1 one, one on the bottom two strings and a, a 2 on the A string for your A chord. And let's change it by keeping the bottom note the same, but put a 2 on the D string and a 3 on the A string. So it's like 1-1-2, one, one, and then 1-2-3. Basically, if, if you break it down, I'm doing note groups of three again, just like this. It's groups of three, but the threes keep going. So it'd be like going. It's like the threes keep going. Um, the, by groups of three, I mean there's two with the bottom notes, and then one on the top note. So it's like one, two, three. Change direction each time. Change it to one, one, two. But where you start getting that uh, rhythmic effect is when you don't put the pauses between them. You stick it together like this. Break this part, mental pictures in your mind. If you want to break it apart beat by beat, it looks like this. That's the first beat. Da 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 da. So picture that and go. That's the first beat. Now the second beat is going to look like this. Da 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 da. So what you got going on is. Da 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 da, and then da 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 da. That's the first two beats. Da 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 da, da 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 da. So let's just try that with the one one two uh, chord. First beat, second beat, with no pause this time. First beat, 
Whoops, did I mess up? Oh, sorry. Re, 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 refix that. First beat's correct. The second beat is. Sorry about that. So it's like. Da, 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 da. And then. Da, 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 da. Let's, put, let's play that. Second beat. Just do that again. Second beat. Stick them together. Do that again. And the third beat is the one that looks like what I already said the second beat was. The third beat is... That's the third beat. So let's put these three beats together with pauses. First beat. Second beat. Third beat. Let's do that again. First beat. Second beat. Third beat. Stick it together. No pauses. We just got one more beat to do. And the fourth beat looks just like the first beat. Beat by beat with pauses, four beats. First beat, second beat, third beat, fourth beat. And then you change chords and you start over. So let's change to the one, two, three. And do the same thing with pauses. First beat, second beat. the whole thing both measures full with no pauses ready good luck If you want to, you can change those top notes each time. For example, the better wants to do like. First group would be, <clears throat> second group would be, third group would be, wait, first group is, second group would be, third group would be, and then the fourth group is like the first. Okay, let's see if we can put that together with pauses. First group. Second group. Third group. And fourth group. Same thing.
especially if you have, if you have a classical background, it will help you. Um, uh, there's a, there's just, I'm, just, I'm just scratching the surface here of Boeing. The bow is the, the heart and the breath of your plane. Um, it's how you reach out. Your music reaches out and touches people the way you bow it. And uh, that's, that's just uh, gets, giving you the tools to, to start allowing you to develop uh, a language. A language you can use for presenting fiddle tunes, for presenting your original material, for, for helping you improvise. I mean, improvisation, people think improvisation, that's like, oh man, it's, it's like you got to pick this note, you got to figure out that note, and, and then they forget. It's the bow arm. The bow arm is improvising. The bow arm will tell you what to do. So improvisation comes from the bow arm. It's a holistic, everything together happening. All this, all this information in your head coming together. It's the bow arm. So, um, I've, I've just scratched the surface here. There, I mean, you get into Irish fiddling, and that's that's a whole other ball game going on with Irish Irish bowling. <clears throat> um, I'm still working on Irish bowling myself, and it's it's a lot of fun, and I recommend studying it. So, bye bye. Thanks, Glenn. That was so great. Okay, cool. I'll uh, I'll go ahead and stop the recording.